dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, both of the palms and of the passion. Amen. Some years ago when the restaurant south of the government center here, just four blocks north, was still called Dos Amigos, Kathy and I were dining with four friends. At some point, Kathy mused about all of the black SUVs that were queuing up in the parking lot behind the jail. I looked, and surely there was just a whole parade of big black SUVs. Not long after that, we watched six men dressed in black suits ushered to a table quite near us. One of our group was sitting close enough to see that the men were wearing Secret Service pins. A little bit after that, three or four more slipped into a booth on the other side of our table. That caused us to wonder. <laughs> a little bit after that, I noticed a very big man. I'll call him a huge man standing at the top of the staircase going down to the lower level of the restaurant. Hmm, I thought, there, there must be something important going on down there. Now, for those of you who don't know this restaurant, which is currently called The Porch, the restrooms are in the lower level of the building. So inquisitive man that I am, I announced to my group, I need to go to the restroom. Quite by accident, I did not mean this, I, I snuck up on the giant at the top of the stairs. I was almost by him down the first stair when he noticed me. He stopped me, asked what I was doing, I explained what I was doing, and he allowed me to pass. As I turned a corner in the staircase, I could see his little brother at the bottom of the staircase. <laughs> this guy ran only about 275 pounds of chiseled muscle, but he gave me almost no notice as I turned right toward the bathroom doors. However, I took a long glance into the dining area of the downstairs area and, and saw a long table, about 15 people there, all men save for one woman, all of Middle Eastern descent. In the restroom, I was trying to figure out how I could delay and get a better view of what was in the downstairs. <laughs> I was unsuccessful at that, went upstairs and reported to my companions. Then one of the other at my table also said that he thought he needed to visit the restroom. <laughs> now, this one is a reporter, and he has ways to get information that maybe a pastor cannot. And he actually talked to the guy at the bottom of the stairs and found out that this was the president and vice president of Iran, along with the president's wife and an entourage who were in town for some very obvious reasons. You know, it was, it was fun to play a little cloak and dagger that night to figure out who was who. It was fun to be in the presence of someone who led a, a nation of the world. In that parade of palms with Jesus so many years ago, did the people know who Jesus was? It seemed like at least some of them did. They were calling out hosannas to the son of David. Did the word spread quickly through the crowd? Who was here? Did a reporter from the Jerusalem Post Bulletin go up to a disciple and ask about more details of this one named Jesus? Did they know that they were in the presence of the Son of God? Surely they did not know what would happen later in the week. When I was a very young pastor, I struck up a friendship with a much older pastor. He had already served for more than 35 years. I considered him a mentor of sorts because he had been around the block so many times and he had, a, he had a good pastoral word for almost every situation. 
we had grown our friendship over a couple of years and it became obvious to me that this man in his twilight was kind of gliding toward the door of retirement, which was still a couple of years away. One day he came to me and said, Norman, can we talk confidentially? I thought that a little odd. It seemed all of our conversations had been confidential, our devotions together, our struggles and our joys of being leaders in the church. He continued, I hate being a pastor. If I... If I could just snap my fingers and the next two years would elapse in a blur so that I could ride out into retirement, that would be such a blessing. He was so burned out. We talked for some considerable time after that. He said, I just, I hate teaching confirmation. I have no good or creative ideas left for sermons. Funerals depress me. I'm burying so many people my own age. If, if, if I have to come up with one more stewardship plan to raise offerings for the church, I think I'll go stark raving mad this list just went on and on he he was so burned out finally he was done and I said uh, you know could could we could we pray together I don't remember the words to that prayer that day I just know we went back and forth I would offer some words Then my friend would offer some words, but mostly they were just sobs and tears. I would offer some more words. My friend would try without much success. I might offer a few more words, but I will always remember how he ended his part of the prayer that day. Quoting Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, Lord Jesus, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Tears were streaming down his face. It was painful to watch this friend in his agony. How painful was it for the disciples to join in a parade with Jesus from the upper room in Jerusalem through the valley and up to the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew reports that Jesus was in grief and was agitated, grieving even to the point of death. We read that Jesus separated himself from the disciples at a little distance in order to pray, but there was no mistaking his agony that night. Just moments before he would be arrested, the night before his own death, the the parade on Sunday had been so full of joy and hope and promise The parade on Thursday night was full of grief, full of evil. 'Twice I have walked the Via Dolorosa in the old city of Jerusalem, from Pilate's Praetorium to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a place where some believe that Jesus was crucified and then buried nearby. Of course, no one knows the exact route that Jesus took from his place of trial and torture to the place of his death. It is enough to know that an innocent man shed blood on the streets of Jerusalem struggling to get to Golgotha. 
both times. One time walked with 44 members from this church. I tried to envision what might have been happening 2,000 years ago in the time of Jesus. I failed both times. The buildings, while very old, were just too normal for me. There were children and adults scurrying around doing their business. The guides kept up their banter about the, the stations of the cross and teaching us. I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with the picture of a parade that would include thieves and Roman soldiers. I could, not, I could not place myself with the Jewish leaders who wanted to make sure that Jesus would die that day or with the women who were afraid Jesus would die that day. I tried to envision myself as a disciple watching my master and friend walking to his own death. But, of course, the disciples were not there. Only John. The rest were hiding. They were not going to be part of a parade that might suck them up into the vortex of death. Three very different parades. Sunday, Thursday, and Friday. It is finished. Or is it? A very different kind of parade might be in our near future. Amen. Our hymn of the day, while quite easy in the chorus, is very difficult in the verses. A cantor shall sing the verses for us. You may join in the refrain. Please rise and sing. <laughs> 